Hello and welcome to That's Football. Why did Gary Neville snub Mark Goldbridge this weekend when he had the opportunity to have a big debate about something that he's very passionate about, football, and we're passionate about as well. So let's get into it because I find this rather embarrassing on a certain level, but it certainly generated a lot of interest when Gary Neville put this out at the weekend. So basically, Trevor Slade said, will Mark Goldbridge ever get involved on the overlap? The guy has a big platform and has a lot of football knowledge. That's questionable, but it'd be great to see him on the show. Remember, Gary Neville has the overlap where he invites lots of smaller YouTube channels on, the, on there to have a debate with him. So Ultimately, man of the people, Gary, or champagne socialist, what was his answer to having the biggest fan content provider on his show for a debate? A big, flat no. And this generated quite a lot of interest because when you actually look at it, he got 33,000 likes for this. So a lot of people obviously agreed with Gary Neville on not wanting to have a chat with me. But obviously I couldn't help myself, so I replied. Uh, Pity could have given you some managerial tips. Um, and actually, I think I ended up ratioing him, didn't I? Yep, 36,000 likes for me and way more retweets to his 35,000 likes. I mean, look. I'm not massively bothered about ratios. I am over 21, but the reality is there was a lot of interest. I was even trending on Twitter because of this. And uh, But the interesting thing is I wanted to get in straight away is a lot of people say, why is this? You must know. And a few people quite rightly tweeted, there must be something going on behind the scenes that Gary won't say or Mark won't say. And ultimately, I think all we're talking about here is content. Gary Neville is, and I remember watching him at Euro 96, fantastic right back. Some people don't give him the respect he deserves as a footballer. You know, I've seen him for England, pocket Ronaldo, Figo. He's done it in the Premier League and, you know, in very, very, very against very good wingers. You know, he's come up against those ones, but he doesn't want to have a debate with me about football. What does that say to me? He's obviously more confident in his football ability and then his debating ability. Um, I don't know why that is. I genuinely don't know. But why would it be? All I, my only involvement in this was content. I'm not scared of having a conversation with any ex-player about football. If you're at the Manchester show, Ben Foster came on stage. I gifted him a sheep and we were taking the piss out of, you know, Wrexham and everything like that. And it was all done in the way that we do do our content. And Ben Foster started giving me a load back about being a Forest fan and stuff like that. It's just banter. But some people just don't have the ability to lock onto that. And I suppose it's in their nature to just be a bit of an arse at some times without actually meeting people. I don't know. However, I have done a little bit of homework for you because there's two things I wanted to talk to you about in relation to this. I think some people think, Al oh, Galbridge, stop being a beg. Stop being a beg to go on, the, on Gary Neville's The Overlap. This didn't start because of me. I actually said, I don't think he'll ever do it because I, don't, I think he's scared of doing it. I think he's like Robbie Savage. I think he's like, you know, um, Carragher, Gary Lineker, all these people. I think it's... Um, they're at a level where they just don't want that sort of heat. You know, they want it in an environment where they're looked after by their producers and everything like that. They don't want to be in a conversation where it gets difficult. But the origins of this lie here. This is where it all started. And I think all these people, because obviously there was a lot of people that were quite OK about it and saying, yeah, we'd love to see uh, that type of content. You only live once at the end of the day. Let's bring it on. And um, there was a lot of people going, oh, we, you stop being a beg, you're a forest fan. You know, you're a fake fan, this, that and the other. Why should he have a chat with you? The reason it, just for those people who are, you know, why should he have a chat with you? Why should he have a chat with you? Because Gary Neville has the overlap. This is the studio. And in the background, they have fans on. You know, very humble of them to let fans, ordinary people have a chat with them. That is the premise of his show. And he invites fan content creators. And unfortunately for some, or, you know, great for us and the community we've built we're the biggest so basically they put a post out a month ago nothing to do with me this is where it all started who would you like to see in the overlap studio next on the show right that was put out by gary neville's very own show right let's go through some of the responses here and as you can see Lots of responses and lots of people saying the same thing. And this goes on and on. And I only want this video to be less than 10 minutes because there's quite a lot to go through. But lots and 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 lots of Mark Goldbridge. This would be a good show. Will you do it? 
blah 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 on and 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 it goes on and 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 it goes on for a very long time before you get anybody else mentioned right so that's where it all starts so all these haters on twitter going why should he why should he they put the post out they got the response from the people and then gary has said no I, that's up to him it's up to him what he wants to do but ultimately don't put a post out there saying who should we get on next for a debate and then when everyone says one person you go no it looks like it is it looks like you're not really interested in what the people say you're actually invest interested in creating your own story and you're pretending to be about the people and that for me is why people like look i don't care whether it's gary lineker gary neville or gary barlow I will call them out if they say something about football and they can call me out. That's what it's all about. But the reason some of these people get called champagne socialists is because actually they're not really about the people. They're about what they're about perception about being about the people, because ultimately you can come in, but you can't come in. And that's why that, that word gets used around certain people. Um, so, look, I'm not really bothered. The United Stand does well. That's football does well. And I think the reason it does well is because we've built a community where we will talk about anything from, you know, Mason Greenwood to serious offences that, that are going on from Super League to titles. We'll talk about anything and we're happy to do it. Obviously, some people aren't and that is their decision to do it. So let them get on with it. Personally, I think if I went down the pub with Gary Neville and he can have a J20 and I'll have a pint, no bothered. We can be finished by nine o'clock and he get to bed. That's fine. So we can get up at five. Whatever. I think we'd get on. I do. But... Ultimately, people will keep saying, why do you think he's got a big problem with you? And ultimately, I don't know because I've never met the guy. I know people who know him, but I don't know him. I've never met him. But ultimately, I think the only assumption I can make is that I've been doing this industry for seven years. You get it all the time. You get it all the time. Charlie met Robbie Savage at an event a few months ago, and he said, why do you work for that Forest fan? And that's somebody who's on BT. Now, I don't know whether that's true. It could be third hand or not or what, but I don't know why Charlie would make that up. It's, it's weird. It's weird to me that these people who've got very good jobs on the TV with you know very big platforms are that insecure that they believe stuff without meeting people. I find it weird. So maybe that's Gary's problem. I don't know. I really don't know. Although I did do a little bit of homework and this is something that I found. Um, not that one. We've seen that one. This. No, not that one either. Right. Why is it not showing me that? Okay. Let me, let me see if I can get this one. Um, this one might be it. Yes. So this was from a couple of years ago. Um, so the context of this is um, he basically said... Um, I might be a football, football pundit, but my morals are more important and I'm not going to call out a mate, which was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when he was doing really bad. So I'd said, so when you talk about United now, should everyone ignore it because they know it's biased because you won't call out a mate? That's what people take issue with. And he said, yes, please ignore me. That's the only thing I can sort of find out in the last couple of years that he's, he might take an issue to. I mean, I've, look, I've called him out about the Bruno thing a few weeks ago. He said on national TV, Bruno Fernandes wanted to come off the pitch when it was 7-0 with Liverpool. And he didn't. And he still hasn't apologised for it. So I'll call it out. As did many fans. Um, the Solskjaer thing, look, I'm not... What? I don't really get it. Like, Carragher calls him out all the time. I'm sure his brother does. I'm sure he gets called out all the time. So why can't I do it? Why can't anyone else do it? It's, it's just... To me, it seems like it's one rule for one and one rule for another. And, you know, maybe Gary's the sort of person that takes a dislike to somebody they've never met because that's his personality. I don't know. But I'm not apologising for saying the Bruno thing was bang out of order. And I'm not apologising for saying that it came across a little bit weird how vindictive it was against Mourinho and Van Hal. But when, we, when it was Ollie, because it was a mate... It was sort of like, it, you know, everybody saw it. And I thought, well, that's not got the best interest of Manchester United at heart. I didn't like saying Solskjaer needed to be sacked. I remember Solskjaer scoring that goal in 99. He's a legend of the club, but ultimately he wasn't a very good coach. And I'm sure Chelsea fans feel the same about Frank Lampard. It is what it is. But look, the truth of the matter is I've got absolutely no idea. The truth of the matter is all his audience wanted it to happen. And he said, no, that is up to him. It's absolutely fine. He can do his thing. We will do our thing. I think our community is more real because it is real. It's not about suppression or you're not going to do this. But ultimately, there was no please can I go on the overlap. I got asked to go on it. The funny thing is, I've got the email. I got asked to go on it last year. 
And I said no, because I didn't want to go and sit next to a certain person who spent the last seven years stabbing me in the back in this industry. And I said, I'll go on it as long as I don't have to sit with him. Um, and ultimately we couldn't sort that out because it was short notice. Um, so, you know, I've already been asked on it. That's the truth. But obviously I won't be asked on it again because that's, you know, we've seen what's happened. So look, I think you've got the true story about it now. That's, that's, that's the story behind it if you're interested. I just think life is too short. I just think good content in this space is what people want. And I just think that all these people who are running scared and everything like that, what are you scared of? It's just a conversation about football. You might win that, I might lose that, or we might actually just generate good content. That's all I'm ever interested in. The reason I sit with you people and have a chat with you when there's a match on or anything like that is because I enjoy it. I enjoy the debate. That's what it's all about for me. And I just think that ultimately people can make their own choice, but don't pretend you are about fans and this, that, and the other, and then completely ignore what people want. It's not what I want. You've seen the list, it's what everybody else wanted, and you've said no to them for some personal grudge that makes no sense. I know some will agree with it, some won't, but that's the story behind it. Get your comments in below, smash a like on the video, and don't forget, it's a massive game tomorrow night. Arsenal at the Etihad, Manchester City, watch along on here. Take care, everyone, and remember, don't have a good day, have a great day.